right, today we're going to talk about my favorite subject, the Honda Rebel. Uh, we're going to get into valve adjustments, valve lash, depending on who you talk to. Um, not a really difficult thing to, uh, to do. Really the uh, most difficult part is getting into, uh, into your bike, so you've got to remove a few items uh, from it. We'll get into that. Um, most important thing you want to have around is your toaster mat. This way you have all your specifications, your torques, clearances, that sort of thing. So we'll be using this throughout the video. In the meantime, let's get started. Okay, next thing we need to do is remove the fuel tank. I always use an extension uh, whenever I work on something. This way I'm sure to keep the wrench away from the tank, even if I may not be going in that direction. Okay, next thing we need to do uh, is we need to remove the fuel tank. In order to do that, um, we've got to remove the fuel line uh, from the petcock. You want to make sure it's in the off position. Uh, this way you don't have a slosh of fuel coming out of there once you remove the tube. And uh, you want to keep a rag handy uh, just in case uh, any fuel uh, decides to leak out of the tube, which there is some in there. Um, you can't see it, but it's in there. Alright, the next thing we need to do is just take the tank off. Uh, you want to be careful, there's a little vent tube uh, underneath here that attaches to the fuel tank. It's got a little clip on it, uh, but it essentially will just slip off. Uh, you can let that lay there. Now I'll take the tank off gently and I'll use my towel uh, to lay under the tank so it doesn't get damaged. Okay, next thing we need to do is remove the uh, timing hole cap cover and the crankshaft cap cover. Uh, what I use for this is a tool you won't find uh, in every toolbox. Uh, this big hunk of metal um, is used to uh, specifically remove these. Uh, and if you have screens, they take care of that too. Okay, now we can access the crankshaft uh, and spin the engine uh, and uh, we can use this hole to line up our T-marks. Okay, our next task is to get uh, into the valve cover. That's where all our work is going to be done. Uh, I like to take these uh, modules and move them out of the way so they don't disturb. This cover is your friend. Don't let it uh, intimidate you. You just want to be really careful when you're reinstalling this valve cover uh, that you do not over torque anything. Okay, what I typically like to do is remove this module back here um, and get it out of the way. <clears throat> this way it's not interfering with your work area. And hopefully it'll stay put where it is. Next we have to get the valve cover off. Basically, just need to pry it up a little bit, break the seal on the rubber gasket, and slide it on it. Okay, a couple of things to point out before you do this procedure on your bike. Um, you want to make sure the bike is cold. Let it sit 24 hours or more. 24 should be sufficient. Otherwise, working on a warm engine, you'll never get the right uh, specifications uh, out of your valves. Uh, next thing is you want to start by getting the engine in the top dead center position for cylinder number one, which is on the left side of the bike. Let me show you how to do that. Okay, there's two ways you need to go about verifying that your uh, number one cylinder, uh, the driver's side of the bike, is in the top dead center position. Uh, first, with this little Pac-Man shaped fella here, as you crank the engine, uh, he rotates and gives you an indication uh, of which way he's pointing by this little notch in it makes it look like a Pac-Man. When you're cranking the crankshaft, you want to watch which way this little fella goes. Right now, he is pointing towards the front of the bike. We want to make sure that he's pointing towards the rear. That's about rear. What you need to do is you need to crank the crankshaft clockwise and watch uh, the flywheel in here. 
you also want to make note of this little dark notch up at the top. Okay? What you're doing is you're cranking the flywheel until you get the right indicator in between that notch. And in this case, we're looking for a vertical bar with a T stamped next to it. There we go. Cylinder number one is at top dead center. Okay, now that we have everything prepared, we've got the bike stripped down, uh, we've got the valve cover off, spark plugs out, uh, cylinder number one at top dead center position, uh, what we need to do uh, is start with the valve adjustment. First thing we've got to do is inspect it. Uh, I recommend using your toaster manual uh, to make sure uh, that you're checking the correct specifications. Uh, this is a 2008 Honda Rebel, and in this particular case, we are looking at the uh, Honda Service Manual 1996 through 2008. Page 3-7 begins to discuss the valve clearance. It uh, shows you removing the uh, timing hole covers and crankshaft uh, cover. Uh, then it gets into uh, the actual maintenance once you have uh, your T-mark uh, in the correct position. Uh, your valve clearance is 0 0.06 to 0 0.10 millimeters. In inches, that's 0 0.002 to 0 0.004 inches. Last time I did my valve adjustment, uh, I adjusted them uh, to 0 0.003, kind of middle of the road. I'm thinking about going with a, with a comfy 0 0.004 this time. Uh, here are the clearances. All right, first thing we need to do is uh, check the clearances, find out what they currently are. Uh, we'll start with the 002. All right, oh, she moves too easily in there. So it's not a two. Let's move on to, uh, to number three. Okay, number three has some resistance. What you're looking for is you want that tappet to be pressing down on the feeler gauge with some drag and that's exactly what I'm feeling here I didn't feel much drag with number two it may feel a little bit but not much alright so that seems to be a number three let's check a number four okay number four doesn't want to go in unless I force it so it's not a four alright let's check the rear one let's we'll start with a 0 0.002 inch and it just slips and slides in there. Let's try number three. Number three, yeah, it kind of slips and slides too. Good work. And a number four. Number four, there's my drag. Okay, so my intake is a .004 uh, my exhaust is 0 .003. Um, I initially intended to set them uh, 0 .003 each. Guess it didn't work out that way. Well, um, since this one is a 0 .004, that one's pretty good. Let's see if we can get that front one adjusted uh, to make it a 0 .04 as well. Okay, we're ready to adjust. This is the exhaust valve. Uh, cylinder number one and that is a nine millimeter so first and foremost I do not have the right tools uh, so I'm gonna have to do this the hard way um, want to loosen the lock nut this way it's loose and you can spin the tap it So we want to get our feeler gauge and we want this to be a point zero zero four. You can see as you tighten the tap it, the more of a bite it gets on that. Too much of a bite. Not enough. That's just the right amount of drag right there. Just want to feel some drag. And then you want to tighten the lock nut without keeping this from spinning. 
Uh, I don't know how you can torque these things down properly uh, while holding the tappet in place. It just doesn't make any sense whether you have the right tools or not. Um, so I'll put my wrench on there and we'll pull down to seven foot pounds. That is what the book calls for. Uh, now we go ahead and recheck our specification. There's a four. Oh yeah, slight resistance. I got it right the first time. Yes, indeed. Let's try a number five. Okay, number five doesn't want to go unless it's forced. You don't want to have to force it. You just want it to slip in there and you want to feel some resistance. Uh, if you recall, the last time I did this, uh, I set them both to 0 0.003. Apparently that is not what they are at uh, or what they were at. Uh, but now we have them uh, both uh, at 004, which is uh, the top uh, of the specification. Don't want to go any higher than that. Um, this should allow a little bit more uh, exhaust to flow out. At least that's what I'm thinking. I could be wrong on that. Time to do the other side. Uh, we have to spin the crankshaft uh, one more time to get this completed. Uh, we're going to go 360 degrees, all right, so that this little Pac Man notch here uh, comes. Uh, one full circle, our T reappears in there, but this time cylinder number two on the right side of the bike is at top dead center. Okay, the little indicator is now facing in the opposite direction. Uh, we have checked the timing mark, the T is uh, exactly where it's supposed to be. And now we're going to go around to the other side and check the clearances on those valves. Uh, we're ready to check the clearances on this side. All right, got a little play there, a little play there. That means we've got uh, cylinder number two, top dead center. Uh, we are going to check. Let's start off with uh, a 004 on the exhaust valve. Doesn't want to go in there. Let's check the intake. It doesn't want to go in there either. So that probably means we are set at 003. On uh, cylinder number two, uh, I initially set him for a 003. Uh, let's give a 003 a shot on the exhaust valve. All right, it goes in. There's a decent amount of resistance. Now let's check the exhaust, or rather the intake. Number three fits in there splendidly. It's like a zero, zero point three and a half. Let's check a number four. Little tight, didn't really want to go in there. So it's, it's kind of in between the three and the four. Uh, that is actually possible. So let's uh, open these uh, lock nuts here, get them adjusted right and see if we can get them in place. Here we'll break them. Just go ahead and break them both free. There. And there. Okay, so these are loose. Now we take our 004 gauge, we slip it in here, and we adjust the tappet until there's just a slight amount of drag on them. That one is good. That one's good. Now we just have to torque them down. Five, six, seven. Let's check it again. Too tight. We'll set it just a little bit looser than I would like, and then we'll try and torque it down again. Put 
Perfect. It slips in. You can feel the drag. That's what we want. Check the torque one more time. Yep. Seven foot pounds. Now let's try torquing this one down. Check the clearance. Too tight. Still good. Just a little less than I think it's going to be. And then we retort. Recheck. It's actually not bad. That's actually pretty good. All right, four and four. Okay, I feel pretty good about it. Next thing we need to do is put everything back on. Okay, for everyone, this is just about the scariest part, is getting this cover back on. Uh, because many people have snapped the bolts that uh, hold the cover in place. And you just don't need to worry about that. As long as you have a proper torque wrench and the willingness to take your time. Okay, we're ready to torque. Now, the book is calling for seven foot-pounds of torquage for that cover. Seven foot-pounds, no more. So, take our trusty torque wrench, apply it, and spin it up to seven pounds. There we go. That's it. Same amount of foot pounds um, for the uh, the tappet lock nuts underneath this cover. All right. While you have your spark plugs out, uh, you might as well go ahead and check the gap on them. Uh, specification calls for 0 0.020 to 0 0.030. I set mine uh, middle of the road 0 0.025. Okay. Reinstall each spark plug. I try to keep the spark plugs in the same cylinder they came out of. Okay, that's it for this portion. Um, all we have left to do is get the uh, tank and other items back on the bike, get it fastened up, take it out for a ride, and let's see what happens. It's actually not running too bad at all. I don't hear any strange sounds or any weird stuff, so I think it's a wrap. Appreciate you watching. Take care. So, first thing we need to do is adjust the engine so that we can get cylinder number one. Uh, this is the left side of the bike uh, in the uh, right top dead center things you want to keep in mind before you do this procedure on your bike is you want to do it on a cold engine. A couple of pointers before you do this task, you want to make sure you do it on a, uh, on a cold engine. And 
do this task, you want to make sure that number one, you do it on a cold engine. Let your bike sit 24 hours or more, but 24 hours should be good. This way you're certain that your engine uh, is completely cooled down. Uh, working uh, on a hot engine is just bad. A couple of things you want to keep in mind when doing this task is you want to do it on a warm, no, not warm, cold. That's right.